Hello, this is David Ferguson with MLC CAD Systems, and I'm going to be showing you some of the new things that have been added to our two, uh, 3D high-speed dynamic OptiRough in MasterCam 2025, specifically our ability to now set equal step-downs for our roughing operations. So what I've got in my screen here is just a, a very simple sort of basic drafted part, uh, good OptiRough sort of fodder, so to speak, uh, big drafted walls at weird angles. So I want to go ahead and step this out. So I'm going to jump into uh, my 3D OptiRough. And again, I'm just going to be using some default settings for some of this, but uh, we'll go ahead and get things selected. Just go ahead and leave our standard 50 thou on the walls and floors. I'll go ahead and create a bit of a uh, containment boundary to go ahead and let the tool know it needs to go outside to that, uh, pointing out that our containment boundaries are now uh, color coded in 2025, which is nice to see. We see, we're seeing a lot of that now in 25. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab a three quarter flat end mill. Uh, this has a flute length of about two inches. Uh, so I've got lots of room to play with my, uh, my step downs, uh, full depth of cut sort of approach to this. And when I go to my cut parameters, I'm just going to go ahead and set this up sort of like I normally would. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a, say, a value in here of somewhere between 10 and 15% for my step overs. We'll go 10%. Um, and my step downs here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put at, say, like 1.35. I'm not going to try to use all two inches of flute. I'm just going to use sort of a bit of a random num there. 1.35. Uh, I'm going to turn on my step ups, put those at around 50 thou. And again, here's that new option for uniform step downs. I'm going to leave that off for now because we kind of want to see how this gets applied. Okay, So I'll leave that off for the moment. Uh, I'm going to go to my steep shallow. I'm going to turn on my minimum and maximum depth. Uh, I do want to point out that we now have uh, sort of the, uh, the graphical representation of what those guys look like. I can actually grab those and, and sort of throw those around out here. So if I want, I can sort of do my maximum and minimum depths that way if I want to. Um, can also still just click if I want to as well, but it's nice to see that being added to there. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that down by a thou or so, uh, just so I don't recut that top. Uh, my linking parameters I'll kind of leave as is for now. Uh, and then my arc filter, I'll just go ahead and turn that on like I normally would, just to go ahead and cut down on a little bit of regeneration time. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and we'll generate that initial OptiRough. And I'm going to see kind of what I'm used to seeing with OptiRoughs. If I'm coming from more of a 2D style where I've used a lot of pockets or or even, uh, even 2D high-speed dynamic mill, and I'm using depth cuts, I'm used to seeing my, my steps or my, my, my depth of cuts sort of, you know, just by default naturally space out equally. But I've never really seen that with an OptiRough. What I'm seeing on my screen here is what I'm used to getting with an OptiRough, which is I'm going to see uh, the OptiRough divide sort of my drive surfaces uh, in equal amounts, but it's based on my step down. So I see 1.35 for my first step down. There's enough room to do another step down at 1.35. And then because you know those don't really sort of cover the whole distance from top to bottom, it's going to throw out a little short step down right at the end. And sometimes those are so short and so close together, you might actually miss it uh, just with the naked eye. And and that's you know that becomes a little frustrating because then to get sort of get those spaced out, I've got to go back and I've just got to start dropping that step down number to sort of you know space those out a little bit easier, a little bit more evenly. Um, and it just becomes a bit of a chasing your own tail sort of thing. Uh, now in 2025, if I want to sort of space those out a little bit nicer, um, I can sort of treat those now like I would uh, my traditional depth cuts with sort of a max rough step value. So I'm going to go back to my cut parameters. I'm just going to turn on uniform step downs. I don't have to change my number here. Uh, when I turn on uniform step downs, that 1.35 effectively becomes my max rough step. So I won't ever be cutting any more than that on any single step down. It's just going to space those out like a traditional depth cut. So we'll go ahead and we'll regenerate that. And we will now see those, you know, I'm still getting three of them, but they're spaced out equally uh, as soon as that regens. And there we go. This is a nice little addition to our, our uh, 3D OptiRough. Uh, in addition to those new graphic elements, for example, if I go into, we saw that on the steep shallow, that I've got my steep shallow as sort of those uh, very visual planes. Um, I'm also going to see that on my linking parameters. And I, if I go back in here and I look, I say, oh, you know what? I've noticed my clearance plane 
uh, set to two inches positive Z default, um, not gonna be high enough. So can I grab that on the screen? I can, I can actually go out and grab this and set my clearance plane to really, you know, again, something else on my screen or, or just kind of wherever. Um, so I'll just go ahead and put that at four and a half and that updates immediately. So nice to see, you know, again, the step down, certainly those are a good thing, but nice to see those sort of graphic elements coming over from the drilling operations being applied to more drilling operations. So really, really lovely additions to our OptiRough in 2025.